what can you do if you have to print uh, with ABS and you have to exist in the same room or the same house as that print? One answer, and I think it's a great answer, is you can get one of these. This is an EnviroCleanse air filter and it is serious business. So there's a two stage filter in here. First stage is a hospital level HEPA filter. Second stage is their fancy VOC removing filter. So we're gonna look at this and we're gonna talk about just how dangerous these printers are. This is the unit that I got. They make a fancier unit. Here, here it is, you can see it's got these UV lights. So whatever gets caught on that filter, the UV light shines on it and kills it. So this is the filter that you need if you have mold in your apartment or your house or whatever. Now, I used to have a downstairs uh, half basement place. Yeah, mold smell everywhere. Man, I wish I had one of these. All I had was a dehumidifier, which kind of knocked down the humidity so it didn't encourage the mold. But this this filters all the mold spores right out of the air and it just it gets rid of that mold smell. So. That's an awesome thing, and I can't imagine a better filter than this. So you've got the HEPA filter for filtering out really fine particulates. You've got their, uh, their fancy VOC removing filter for filtering out all of the chemicals, and then you've got the mold killing ultraviolet light. That is a good filter right there. But for us uh, dealing with 3D printers, we really only need uh, the more basic one here, uh, which is the HEPA filter and the adsorption filter. Now that's different than absorption. This is the adsorption filter. So you can see it uses manganese oxide, zinc oxide, and titanium dioxide to do that adsorption process. We can see that it's on caster wheels, so um, it rolls around nicely everywhere you need to take it. Um, this front panel here comes up, and you can see that that gives you access to the business end. So those are the filters that, that you know make this unit so special. Nice high quality thing here. So I'm gonna take these uh, filters out of their plastic and then what I have to do is run it for 24 to 48 hours on the whisper setting or the low setting uh, just to sort of break it in before I can really put it through its paces. Now this is, this is quite heavy you guys uh, and you can hear it. It's got these, uh, this powder in it when I shake it, so interesting. Look at the size of that fan. This thing is, I would say, more industrial than, than like, you know, your consumer level. So this thing means business. It's not just some, like, pretty piece of furniture that's more for show. It's definitely like a function over form kind of kind of unit here. So this one has no gasket, and I'm just gonna assume that you just slide it in on top, just the same way that it came with the uh, plastic wrapped on it. So I think I'm ready to start running this thing. That's not too loud. Uh, it's not quiet, but it could be worse. Uh, on the Whisper, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty quiet. Yeah, so this printer has been running for hours and hours, and the room reeks of the resin. It just, it's really strongly smelling of resin. And it's giving me an allergic reaction, which is crazy. I feel like uh, I have hay fever. The back of my throat itches, the, my nose kind of itches. Um, and I thought I was just having an allergy attack to the grass in the air, but then I went and hung out outside with my kid for 10 or 15 minutes and the allergies went away. So it's just hanging out inside this room with the resin smell that's giving me that allergy attack. Crazy. And here's what's even crazier. This is called a FUBOT and it's an air quality measuring device. So it's just an air quality meter. And it was provided to me by um, EnviroCleanse so that I could test the particulates and the VOCs released by these printers uh, and the resin printer as well. Now, the FUBOT communicates with your cell phone via an app, and you can see that currently the VOCs in this room are like 125, 126 parts per billion, which is not much, you guys. That's, uh, that's really, that's 350 parts per billion is where things start to get unsafe with VOCs. So even though I'm getting an allergic reaction and it reeks of this resin, uh, as far as VOCs go and um, particulates, according to the meter here, 
this printer isn't poisonous at all. And that's what the, uh, the literature also said that we were looking at a few minutes ago. So uh, I don't know how to rectify those two situations because I'm clearly reacting to the smell of this resin. So I should be running the EnviroCleanse air filter right now, but I'm not because I'm trying to establish a baseline for how polluted I can get the air uh, here in this room. And to that end, I'm gonna kick on these printers here, the, uh, the FDM machines, all printing with ABS and really just make the room really stinky and see what the, uh, what the FUBOT has to tell us about the air quality after I do that. Anyway, I'm just printing this uh, Ender 3 Pro and my Two Tree Sapphire, but they've both been printing ABS for about five hours now. And I've been watching the VOCs in the air. Currently they're reading 170 or 171 thereabouts. And uh, they've gone as high, they've peaked for a minute at about 200, but usually they're sitting right around 180. Um, I've opened the door a few times and that drops the, the VOCs quite a bit, just a, just a quick opening of the door uh, in this room. By the way, the room is about uh, 15 feet by 15 feet with eight foot ceilings, to give you an idea. So yeah, that's not even uh, unhealthy levels of VOCs, uh, according to uh, this, the, the FUBOT. And you can see I've got the FUBOT sitting right there, uh, real close to these two nozzles. But watch this, I can spike the FUBOT using this very wet ABS filament here um, in my 3D printer pen. There you go. You see the FUBOT's turned orange and it's currently reading particulates are very high, 99. So uh, there's the particulates, the microscopic particulates being ejected from this wet filament coming out of the, the, the 3D printer pen. Okay, let me just lean the cell phone up right there so I can show you how to really spike the VOC count. This is just some rubbing alcohol. I'm just shaking it onto my hand here and then just waving my hand in the air around the, uh, around the meter. And look at that, VOC count is up to <laughs> 10,000 parts per billion. So uh, yeah, that's gonna make the, make the meter go crazy. So uh, in comparison to the smell of rubbing alcohol, these ABS prints uh, in combination with the, uh, with the resin print there in the background, uh, none of this is really, uh, you know, spiking the meter, but, but it sure is stinky in this room. So I am now finally going to turn on the EnviroCleanse air filter and see how long it takes uh, for this room to stop smelling quite so bad. All right, well, let's start this timer and then I'll come down here and turn this on. I'll just keep that running and let you know when it stops being stinky. Well, it's been 12 minutes and 30 seconds and I just went into the other room to get acclimated to a not smelly room and I came back in here and it just smells like clean air. It smells like minerals. I don't know how else to describe it and that happens to be a mineral filter uh, in there. So, okay, the smell is gone and it really smells a whole lot cleaner in this room and that's probably mostly just due to the HEPA filter but the VOCs, according to the FUBOT, have not diminished at all. So I'm gonna keep on running this timer and see just how long it takes for that VOC count to get back down to like 123, 125, which is where it was uh, when I started this project yesterday. So it's been 43 minutes. The VOCs are back down to a healthy 125 parts per billion. So that EnviroCleanse filter really does a good job um, and let's talk about how it's cleaning the uh, VOCs out of the air. This here is a bag of titanium dioxide. It's, uh, it's not an illicit substance. And you can see it's just this powder. And um, titanium dioxide, basically just titanium rust, um, is one of the three active ingredients being used in, uh, in this filter. Now titanium di dioxide is most commonly used as a white pigment and you can see it smeared there on my fingers and in fact that's why I have this bag I was using it as a pigment for some uh, leather treatment but um, yeah it's got this um, super uh, lots of surface area the, the actual shape of the powder is just tons and tons of surface area and that's why it's being used as one of the three uh, active ingredients in this filter here you know coming from EnviroCleanse so you can hear when I rattle this all the little granules of the titanium dioxide along with the zinc oxide and the manganese oxide. So let me flash some pictures here on the screen for you guys and you can see that microscopically uh, just tons of surface area for the um, volatile organic compounds to sort of coat. 
So the more surface area, the better. So this coating of the surface area of the, uh, of the oxides by the VOCs, that whole process, that is the adsorption that I was talking about earlier. And it's the same process that activated charcoal, activated carbon uses to filter out VOCs. And uh, also other chemicals, like if you have an activated carbon water filter, activated charcoal water filter, that's the same process. It's also adsorption. Uh, there as well. So uh, carbon is widely used as a filter because of its adsorption properties, um, but it doesn't have an adsorption affinity for all VOCs. And that's where the fancy cocktail of the manganese oxide, zinc oxide, and titanium dioxide in the um, EnviroCleanse filters, that's where that comes in. So um, you're basically going to have a much broader spectrum of uh, VOCs that will get uh, caught in the uh, EnviroCleanse filter over a carbon filter. It does seem to be the case that if you just want the best filter out there, then the EnviroCleanse filter is pretty much it. You get a whole lot more life out of one of these filters. So, um, you know, where a carbon filter might need to be changed every month, this might go six months. So, so that's another reason to buy an EnviroCleanse, it's just the longevity on the filter. Guys, I mean, I know I'm kind of gushing and speaking really positively of this filter, but um, I'm sold on it. I would have bought this filter. In terms of the agreement, they gave me a, a unit to test, but I did not have to say positive things. I tested it, and these are the conclusions that I'm coming to. And yeah, I would have bought this filter uh, after learning what I've learned. So just... the fact that VOCs are heavier than air, so they tend to accumulate down on the ground. And this is a really big deal if you're like me and you have a little kid running around your house. You know, my two-year-old, he's down there in the VOCs. He's running around and breathing them. And, you know, his little body is way more susceptible to VOCs than mine because I'm an adult. I'm, you know, pretty formed. He's, he's still being, he's still growing. So um, that's, you know, I really want to protect his health. And for that reason, I'm really happy that I've got what I know to be the best uh, air filter out there for VOCs and of course it's got that hospital HEPA filter so I, I can't imagine a better filter.